investment of $45 billion to help transit agencies and school districts adopt clean zero emissions buses. So uh, we're excited to show you those today. The American Jobs Plan will also provide $32 billion in financing to help electric vehicle manufacturing to retool and make sure that Americans are getting good jobs in this globally expanding industry. This is a big and exciting opportunity. Uh, these investments will create good jobs here in the U.S. while also tackling climate change and reducing harmful emissions in the air that we and our children believe, uh, breathe. So to kick us off uh, in that tour in this building that you see right here on the map, I'd like to introduce you to Mayor Knox White of Greenville, uh, who is going to start us off and kick off the tour. Mayor White, over to you. Hey, Mr. Okay, Mayor, thank you very you? much. And and thank you, Mr. President. Uh, welcome to Greenville, South Carolina, virtually. Uh, you'll have a chance to tour this uh, remarkable business called Proterra in just a few minutes with the CEO, Jack Allen. But I want to welcome you to Greenville and welcome you, as I say, to Proterra. Uh, I want you to know that uh, over 10 years ago, the city of Greenville recruited Proterra to Greenville. Uh, we were trying to build and, and ensure that we were building a diverse manufacturing economy. And to get this economic diversity, we felt like we needed to invest in green infrastructure and technology, and certainly Proterra fit the bill. Uh, that was 10 years ago. Uh, we, we believed that then, we still believe that today. The other feature of our Greenville economy is advanced manufacturing. And I wanna point out that Proterra sits on Interstate 85, just a few miles away from two other great examples of investment in green infrastructure and green technology. And that would be the North American headquarters of Michelin, just a few miles up the road, as well as a few more miles, the BMW manufacturing plant. All of those companies are at the vanguard of this effort. So it's something that we're very proud of, and Proterra is very much a part of that. And now Mr. Jack Allen, the CEO of Proterra, will give you a tour of this, again, remarkable facility. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> How are you today? I'm well. Better for seeing you guys. Well, yeah, thank you. You know, on behalf of 600 employees that we have here at Portera, uh, it's really my pleasure uh, to, to welcome you to Greenville. Uh, this is where we build zero emission, all electric transit buses. So thank you for joining us today. But really more importantly, thanking, thank you for your commitment to electrifying commercial vehicles and your commitment to the development of American technology to do so and the commitment to American jobs as relates to combating the, the climate crisis. This is incredibly consistent with Proterra's mission. Our mission is to advance EV technology to deliver the world's best performing commercial vehicles. And we're incredibly proud to be an American company and we're incredibly proud that our technology was developed here in America. So Proterra has three businesses and they're all centered around the design and manufacturing of these battery packs that you see here. These battery packs are, are built at our plant in Los Angeles with 85 United Steel workers. We take these battery packs and we put them into transit buses. We're the number one builder of electric transit buses in North America. We've sold over a thousand of them. And as a matter of fact, there's 16 of them in your home state of Delaware. I know. Some in Wilmington. Yep. And some in Wilmington, some in Dover. Yep. Uh, there's also 14 right outside the White House in Washington, D.C. And Mr. Mayor, there's 30 of them in the state of South Carolina, with many of them being right here in Greenville. So that's one thing we do with our battery systems. The next thing we do is we have, we take our battery systems and we have partnerships with commercial vehicle manufacturers across the world, Australia, the UK. But our biggest one is right here in the United States. And it's right up the road. And the name of it is Thomas Built Bus. They build the school buses and yep. we electrify them with our systems. So we just started this program with them last year. But I have to tell you, I am incredibly excited about the, the prospect of electrifying school buses. I don't know about you, but I want my grandchildren riding on clean, quiet trans school buses. You and me both. All right. So the third part of our business might be the most critical, and that's where we do charging and infrastructure. We've had agencies and fleets tell us over the years they would like to go faster 
in electrification, but they need help on charging and infrastructure. So we have a business that's doing just that. But I believe the fastest way to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles is a focus on charging and on, on infrastructure. So we believe that the commercial vehicle electrification is at an inflection point. We continue to grow as a company. We continue to hire. We're up to 350 people here in Greenville. We're hiring more. We're hiring in Los Angeles. We're hiring in Burlingame. So we're thrilled to showcase our facility here to you today. Uh, we're going to do just a couple of things. We're going to show you how we install batteries. We're going to show you how we prepare our body for, uh, for build. And then we're going to take you to final assembly and show you where the, the customer uh, preparation is all done. And along the way, you're going to get to meet some great teammates of mine uh, here at, at Proterra. Well, Mr. Chairman, let me just say something quickly to you. The fact sure. is you're making me look good. I have overwhelming, no, I mean it. I have overwhelming confidence in American enterprise. I'm not, I'm not being solicitous. We can do anything we put our mind to it. Anything we can put our mind to it. And you just talked about, you know, you got to be able to charge these. You know, we used to, my, 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 my grandpa years ago, he died a long time ago, but he used to work for a thing called the American Oil Company. And he was with a guy named Blaustein who put in gas stations. They needed gas stations. People didn't want gas stations around them. They were worried about burying all that, all that gasoline in the ground. And he, that's how he got to, that's how he got involved. And we need charging stations. That's why in this, re this recovery act that we just passed, as well as this jobs bill, we're going to build 50,000 of those along all our highways we're moving. Because that's going to change your ability to do the incredible things you can do. Well, thank you very much. We agree, too. The charging systems in place, that, that's one of the key elements of driving, uh, driving demand. So, you know, one of, let me talk about our battery packs here just for a moment. Sure. What we do is we take these battery cells that you see here. Yep. And we put them together and connect them inside this vehicle, this battery pack right here, in order to, to power our buses. We take over almost six of these packs to put them on a bus. Now that may seem like a lot, but the, these transit buses, they have a big job. They need to go 300 miles a day every single day. Yep. So we, in these, in our battery systems, we have almost 40,000 of these. And just to give you some perspective, there's only 4,400 in a Tesla Model 3. So these transit buses, they do, they do a lot, a lot of work. So our battery systems, they're known for safety, they're known for incredible range, and they're known for long life. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to introduce you to Morgan, and Morgan is gonna show you how we install this battery pack into that transit bus. Hey, Morgan, how are you? Thanks for the tour, kid. <laughs> Can't hear you, kiddo. Oh, I got her. No, there you go. Take this one. All right. All right, I'm going to just be using that phone. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Good afternoon. Good How afternoon. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Morgan Davis, I'm sorry, I'm a here, uh, I've been in Procure for about a year and a half, and, uh, I love it here, so I'm going to walk you through the battery installation process. Uh, as you can see coming behind you, we've got the lift, and that's the battery up on the lift, and then, up, and then after under the bus, Morgan, maybe you can hold that phone a little to speak a little closer to you. Why don't you try it now? Uh, as they go up, come closer to me. Um, they as go they go up, I'm trying to see how they get installed. 
And then what we do is we add bolts to the batteries themselves. After it's in place, uh, we make the connections uh, to power the bus. And it's a good thing that the batteries are on the underbody of the bus because it creates a better lower center of gravity. And it also helps with the stability of the bus itself. So once the batteries installed and hooked up, um, we're all ready for the next station. Okay, uh, Morgan, how, how much does that battery pack weigh, roughly? Um, Two thousand pounds. About two thousand pounds. All right. That's um, a... <laughs> and what kind of range does that have? That bus? Uh, I think it's a three hundred mile range for a bus. Gotcha. All right. Great. Thank well, you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Morgan uh, and Jack yeah, as well for the demonstration. So, sir, let's move along to the next stop with uh, Proterra's Vice President for Manufacturing, Brian Miller. And we're gonna learn more about uh, the suppliers, including small businesses uh, that contribute in uh, component parts as well as the in innovation that goes into the final product. So, Brian, over to you. Hi, welcome into Proterra, Mr. President. Hope nice you're having a great you. day. I'm, uh, I'm Brian Miller, I'm the Vice President of Manufacturing. I wanna walk you through a little bit about our product, a little bit about our bus. Uh, when, we, when we launched Proterra, we actually started with a vehicle that was designed from the ground up to be an electric bus. Uh, it all starts with our composite body. Our composite body gives us about 10% uh, about less weight, uh, which is about 3,000 pounds, versus a traditional diesel bus. Obviously, benefits of that's going to give us increased range. It's going to help the efficiency of our drivetrain. Drive also, as Morgan was showing you, uh, installing the batteries at the bottom of the bus gives us that lower center of gravity and also makes a nice, smooth, comfortable ride for, for our customers. Uh, this body is made uh, in, in uh, Rhode Island by TPI Composites, uh, an American company. Uh, we're thrilled to say that over 75% of our components are made right here in the U.S. and sourced in the U.S. Uh, we have partners with over 300 suppliers. Uh, we, uh, we include those small businesses here in the U.S., uh, disadvantaged workers, uh, veteran uh, organizations, veteran uh, suppliers, and uh, FEMA-owned suppliers. So we're very proud of that, very proud to be an American company. Uh, and I'm with uh, Mercedes here, one of our manufacturing technicians, who wants to walk you through a little bit of the installation process. Hey, Mercedes, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Mr. President? Now, you're not going to go swinging off that, that top, are you, with that? I no, I hope not. I'm going to okay. really All good. All right, I, I got you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm the mechanical technician. I'm here on the rooftop, and this is the first stop in our journey of building these electric buses. And at my station, we'll install all the attachment parts of the body, which are the battery systems, radiator, and cooling systems, and other vehicle components. And after I've installed all of that, it'll go down the line, and they'll integrate all the other components that go onto the bus. And I have an example here of an escape hatch that I usually install on the bus. I didn't do that today. Um, it takes me about 25 minutes to do that, but I just wanted to give you an example um, of something that I attach up here. Well, I'll tell you what, let me ask you, how long does it take you to assemble the bus? So on my 40 foot buses, it takes me about a day and a half to complete. And it's just you working on a single bus, correct? Yes, sir. Or I have um, another partner up here to help me with my HVAC systems that go right here. All right. Well, I'll tell you. Now, is that a different battery pack you need for that? Or is the battery pack underneath do everything from drive the bus to maintain the cooling system, heating system, et cetera? Yes. And no, it's not a different battery pack. All right. And how do you feel knowing that you're helping put clean vehicles on the road out there. It feels great. It does, I feel good it? doing it. <laughs> yes, well, sir. We're proud of you. Proud of you. Thank you. We're going to end up owning the future, I think, if you keep we keep oh, doing yes. what we're doing. I Isn't believe that? it. Well, thank you. Appreciate thank very you. much. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, Mercedes. That was great. Um, and so, sir, now we're going to move on to the last stop in the tour. This is to the final assembly station where the buses are inspected and uh, commissioned. Uh, before they go off to customers. Uh, we're going to turn it back over to uh, uh, Jack, 
who's been moving around clearly to describe. Uh, can you tell us what, what we're looking at here? Sure, uh, Mr. President, we're at the final assembly stop. This is the last place before customers take, uh, take control of this vehicle. The vehicles that you see back here, Prince George's County and uh, Transit in, in Maryland and Port Arthur in Texas, these vehicles were bought under FTA federal funding. It's a program called LONO that the FTA has had for a number of years. It was intended and it's worked just remarkably well to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles by transit agencies from Alaska all the way uh, to Miami. So we're very excited uh, about that program and it continues uh, today and, and Proterra and our customers partner in that all the time. The other vehicle over here is this Thomas built bus. This is the school bus that our partner makes and you see that decal on the windshield powered by Proterra. We're very proud to partner with Daimler on that program. I'd like to introduce you uh, to Will. Will's the commissioning manager. Will's going to tell you what he does in this station to get the vehicles prepped for the customer. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'm Will Rivera. Hey, I'm Will. the uh, commissioning manager here for, uh, for Terra. Uh, if you see behind me, this is our commissioning area. So at this stop, we get electrify the buses for the first time. We, uh, the buses are wrapped and they go to, we perform a final inspection. Once the final inspection is complete, we do an interface with the customer. The customer comes in, we perform our customer inspection. And once we get customer sign off, the buses are ready to ship and ready to go. I'll be darned. Let me ask you, the, uh, when you start making a thousand buses a year, what are you gonna, you're gonna need more room for your customers, aren't you? <laughs> yes, there are definitely, definitely bigger infrastructure. What, what sort of testing do you put the buses through? This, we do a lot of low voltage, uh, high voltage testing. Uh, we do a lot of grounding and bonding testing. That's resistance checking throughout the bus. So once it goes into our commissioning area, the bus is turned on for the first time. So we work all the electrical kinks out on the bus. And once it's complete, we put it on the road, sir. And then we weigh the bus and we do some water testing. And then we do our own internal final inspection, like I said earlier. And then we uh, interface with the customer and it's, it's ready for the uh, customer to buy off on it. And it's ready to go, sir. Do the buses, as they come into your shop there, they already have the painting, the decals, and that's already done, right? Before the, they nope. come in? It depends, sir. Sometimes the, the buses are, the customer will do the wrap, or uh, they'll, they'll do the wrap or paint at site, at the customer site. And sometimes we do the wrap here. We have a third party come in and wrap the bus. Oh, okay. Or, or we will send them off to uh, the paint shop and get them painted, I depending on what the customer wants. Gotcha. And I, you know, I know you're not doing a ribbon cutting, but they tell me, how does it feel? Uh, how do you do the first plug-in? I mean, how's that? How's that work? So when you first, you mean the, when you first turn on the bus? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So when you turn on the bus for the first time, when it's after it's being built, it's you, you, you see a lot of the power. You see a lot of the testing being performed. There's a lot of hours and a lot of time and goes into these buses to make sure that they're efficient. And before they get on the road, these buses are fully, fully ready to go. And uh, we perform our checks before it goes out to the customer. Gotcha. And th are these buses driven to the destination or they go by freight rail or what? They go by freight. So we have uh, a third party that comes in here and we dr they drive the buses to their destination. Gotcha. Well, you're making a big difference, man. You know, uh, we have a lot, to, a lot of catching up to do, but we're going to be in a position where we ought to own the future here. We ought to be the single most significant suppliers of electric buses and vehicles in the world before it's over. Right now, we're running way behind China, but you guys are getting us in the game. You guys are getting us in the game. It's going to make a lot of difference. And just in terms of the health of our children, you know, they... Those kids, there's a lot of evidence that, you know, breathing that diesel fuel, a lot of asthma, a lot of, you know, you just, it's not only, not only making it more convenient to ride and making it uh, more smooth and all of that, it's just gonna, it's gonna physically change the health of our kids and those yellow school buses getting out back and forth to school. Yes, sir. Well, you should be proud of what you're doing. I'm sure you are. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Great. And okay. Go ahead, okay, Jeff. Mr. President. Yeah, Mr. President, well, I'd just like to wrap up and 
and really just thank you for spending the time with us today. I hope you can share the excitement of the, the employees at Proterra, that this is, is really a passion uh, amongst our employees to provide clean, quiet transportation for everybody. Uh, we're extremely excited about the American Jobs Plan and the investment in infrastructure. We want that development done here. We want those jobs here. We want to grow this business uh, to five times what it is today, five years from now. That'll create over 2,000 jobs in the transit assembly alone, plus jobs in California to make batteries and chargers and the 600 suppliers. So we're incredibly excited about the future and we're really proud to join the administration in the journey towards clean, quiet transportation. So thank you so much for being with us uh, here today. Well, you're welcome. I used to have a friend who said, it's always great to do well and do good. You're doing both, pal. No, you really are. We're going to well, change the way in which the air people breathe as a consequence of what you, you all do in the battery technology overall. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and have a good rest of your day. You too. Thanks. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jack, and also uh, Mayor White, uh, Morgan, Will, Mercedes, and the whole Proterra team. Uh, thanks for hosting us in, uh, in Greenville and showing us around the plant. Um, okay. Can, you guys can are doing I say great. One, one thing before we close? I want you all to know I used to be a bus driver. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm not. I worked my way through law school driving a school bus. <laughs> That's what I did for summer school and during the year. That's how I got money to get through law school at Syracuse. A lot of snow, though. That's great. A lot of snow. <laughs> well, that's great. Nice we seeing you all. Some, yeah, we brought out some of our teammates to say goodbye to you and to thank you again for spending the time with us today. Well, I'm going to come down and see you in person. So I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jack, you. and the whole thanks. team. Thank and you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Sir, that uh, concludes our tour for today. Doing good work. Doing good work.